All right, well, welcome to a uh, somewhat unique video for me. I don't, I've never done this before, so this is the first time for everything. Uh, we're going to look at some true-false questions, and not just a handful. Um, I think it's 15 or 16, something like that. Quite a few, maybe 17. Uh, true-false questions related to relevant costing decisions. And so all of the concepts that we've covered... Uh, throughout the entire chapter on uh, relevant costs and revenues for decision making are going to come into play. So they won't, because these are true false questions, they won't all, uh, it won't be necessarily sequential uh, as far as the order that we went through the, these uh, concepts in other videos. So I'm going to give you the answer and then I'm going to tell you why it is uh, the answer in most cases. Uh, well, I'll always tell you why it's the answer, but hopefully I'll do so in such a way that actually helps you. So uh, we're going to start here with question number 35. Um, it says outlay uh, costs are costs that have been incurred in the past, such as the purchase of a new piece of equipment for an outlay cost of $8,000. This is... A false statement. A piece of, of equipment that has already been purchased in the past is a sunk cost. So outlay costs must refer to the future. We're thinking about taking on this project. It will we if we do so, we will have outlay costs of and then fill in the fill in the blank. 36. All outlay costs are relevant. This is a false statement. Outlay costs are almost always relevant. Okay. However, however, they're only relevant between uh, if the choice is to incur the outlay cost or to do nothing. There, it is possible, or 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 let's say that we have competing alternatives with different levels of outlay costs, and so that's why they're almost always relevant. However, it is possible it is possible that outlay costs that we you know we have to do option A or we have to do option B, and the outlay costs are identical for either of those options. And in that case, we would not be able to say that all outlay costs are relevant. In that scenario, that would not be true. Question 37 says, opportunity costs are usually relevant in, uh, in relevant cost analysis, but not always. Well, they messed it up right here. And they actually messed it up right here because opportunity costs are always relevant. Okay. Uh, differential analysis is an approach to the analysis of relevant costs that focuses on the costs that differ among alternative actions. This is precisely uh, what we've talked about. We can't do differential analysis unless we have some type of a difference. So this is absolutely a true statement, our first true statement. What a deal. Question 39, joint costs are associated with joint products that are incurred subsequent to the split-off point. What do you think? Well, this is a false statement. And it's all based on this word right here. This would need, it, To make this a true statement, it would need to say prior to the split-off point. Uh, but um, uh, anything incurred after the or subsequent to the split off point would be what we call a separable or separate cost, not a joint cost. Question 40 says, information that is related to past events is relevant in the decision making process. Okay, you need to look at this question and know, bam, immediately, false. Because information that is related to past events has already occurred. So if we're, it doesn't matter, it doesn't say anything in this about cost necessarily, but information that has already happened 
is never relevant to future uh, uh, decisions. Now, I could probably make a case that if you got burned doing something, you probably don't want to do it again. That's not what we're talking about here. Okay, we're, They don't come out and say that we're dealing with costs, uh, but that's, I think, the spirit of the question, and this is most definitely false. Question 41 says the outsourcing decision is also referred to as a make or buy decision. And that is a true statement. Um, you know, it would, uh, it would probably be that we would not call, um, if we outsourced, for example, our technical support, where we're outsourcing a service, probably wouldn't call that make or buy. Um, so sometimes we might say, if it's a service, we're going to use the term outsourcing, and if we're making a, a product component, we're going to call it make or buy. However, they are largely considered to be uh, synonyms, so this is a true statement. All right, let's get to a handful more of these. Bear with me one second. Okay, let's see what we have here. Okay, question 42 says, a company may outsource some of its production to focus on core competencies. Okay, so this is an interesting one um, because the key word here is may. That makes it a true statement. I will also tell you that we could that another true statement that's probably not going to be on the handout, but another true statement would be that a company will not sometimes outsource uh, some of its production to maintain core competencies competencies. So when we're talking about core competencies, we can outsource that so that we can focus our attention on what we're really, really good at, or we can uh, if we if we consider that element of production or service, either one, a core competency, we might not outsource so that we can maintain that core competency. Either one of those is possible, but this says it, that they may do it, so it is actually a true statement. 43 says, in an outsourcing decision, uh, unavoidable fixed costs are irrelevant. Well, I'll tell you right now, I don't care if it's an outsourcing decision or any other decision. Unavoidable fixed costs are never relevant to future decisions. So this, they, that's what they said. They said it was irrelevant. So that makes it a true statement. Question 44 says, in an outsourcing decision, variable costs of production are relevant. Okay, very good. So you think about it now. Uh, variable costs that we're going to incur if we outsource it, we're not going to incur it. And if we make it ourselves, we are going to incur it. Well, that is a difference because it's either doing it or not doing it. And so this is a true statement. Variable costs are almost always uh, relevant. Now, sometimes between alternatives, uh, the variable costs incurred um, might be the same, uh, but certainly in this situation and in, in special order decisions and so forth, uh, variable costs are going to always matter. Question 45 says, in an outsourcing decision, rent received from an outside party for facility use is a relevant cash inflow. So what, and then it gives a little bit of, um, I may have put this in here myself. It says by outsourcing, some space was created that was then uh, rented out. So yeah, if we, so what we're saying here is if we outsource this, we create some, we free up some of our uh, facilities and we can rent that out to a third party if we want to. Obviously, if we do not outsource, we need that space and we can't get the rent. So that's a difference that makes uh, this a true statement. 46 says, in a special order decision, unavoidable current fixed costs are taken into consideration in setting a sales price. Well, we talked about this in another uh, true-false question already. This is going to be false because they said um, are taken into consideration. Where am I at here? Right here. 
um, if we're taking it into consideration, we're implying or we're saying that it's uh, that it's a relevant uh, item, and that is not true. Forty-seven says, in a special order decision, the sales price should be sufficient to cover a job's variable costs, incremental fixed costs. You know, fixed costs that we incur because we do something. Uh, different. Uh, that was an example of a $500 design for a label on some soup cans that we had on a prior video. That would be an incremental fixed cost and generate a profit. This is going to be a true statement quantitatively. There are a handful of situations where we might go ahead and do Yes, if we're operating well below capacity and our employees are kind of disgruntled because we're sending them home early, we might go ahead and take a job um, just to um, uh, just to keep our employees working. Quite honestly, as long as we don't lose uh, any money on the deal, you know, that can work out. But for our purposes, uh, this would be a true statement. Question 48, uh, Hill Company can further process product O to produce product P. Product O is currently selling for $60 per pound and costs $42 per pound to produce. Product P would sell for $82 per pound and would require an additional cost of $13 per pound to produce. The differential cost of producing Product P is $13 per pound. This is a true statement. We have to be careful about these types of questions because you can be asked for any number of things. You could be asked for differential costs. You could be asked for differential revenue. You could be asked for differential profit. And I doubt this will happen, but you could even be asked for differential contribution margin sure why anybody would ask that that way but we could ask that okay uh, so let's see here we got true there so then we'll skip down to number 49 it says the differential revenue or differential revenue is the amount of increase or decrease in revenue expected from a particular course of action as compared with an alternative this is absolutely true If we do this, we're going to create differential revenue of so much. And hopefully that's a positive number. Hopefully it's not, we're not going in the other direction. Question 50 says, got three more to go. Stick with me. Hill Company can further process uh, product O to produce product P. This is the exact same scenario we had right up here, but we'll read it again. Product O is currently selling for $60 per pound and costs $42 to produce. Product P would sell for uh, $82 per pound and uh, would require an additional cost of uh, $13 per pound to produce. The differential revenue of producing product B or product P is $22 per pound, and that is a true statement by merely taking what we were, would have gotten 60 and what is the difference between 60 and 82. It's 22. So this is a true statement. I believe that's the fourth true statement in a row. What a deal. <clears throat> Question 51 says, in addition to the differential costs in an equipment replacement decision, the remaining useful life of the old equipment and the estimated life of the new equipment are important considerations. Okay. The reason why, so this is, I will tell you right now that this is a true statement. And so what we're talking about here, what we're talking about here is what we're saying is that if I were to get rid of the old equipment, that would create disposal value. And the more uh, useful life that still exists on that uh, equipment, 
the higher that disposal value is. Okay, so if I sell it today versus a year from now, there's going to be a difference there. And then the estimated uh, life of the new equipment. This is one that you may think, no, no, no. This is actually a consideration because the useful life is probably going to impact our estimate of salvage value. And both disposal value and salvage value, though not the same thing, uh, are both relevant costs. So this is a true statement. Last question, finally, question 52 says, differential revenue is the amount of profit uh, that would result from the best available alternative uh, proposed use of cash. And then I added think carefully in there. Okay, let's read it again. Differential revenue is the amount of profit that would result from the best available alternative proposed use of cash. What do we think? This is a false statement. Differ so revenue and profit are not the same thing. So we have to be very, very careful when answering a question like this. And quite honestly, even if it's not a true-false question, and let's face it, it probably won't be, um, we really need to know the difference between differential revenue and uh, differential profit. Students generally do not have too much trouble with differential cost, but sometimes if they're not reading the question carefully, uh, they can uh, make a mistake between differential revenue and differential profit. All right. Well, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching.